Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, we read of a great scene in heaven before the throne of God. They sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood. Men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. Here it is, Heidi, Dorothy, Jan, who are singing Heaven's Jubilee. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions and we search the scriptures, God's holy word in order to find the answers. Question number one, how were people saved in the Old Testament before the coming of Jesus the Messiah? And the concern is those who trusted, those who sought to live for God, those who were not wayward in their conduct or in their thought, their hearts were set upon the Lord, what is to be said of them? In Hebrews chapter 11, after an extensive declaration of the journey of faith, Hebrews chapter 11 stands as the hall of faith. And it points us, standing in the New Testament, it points us back to numerous men and women who from in Old Testament times lived their lives and were pleasing to the Lord. We read, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Verse 3, by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by creation, and on and on we read. Verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please Him. We who are post-cross, after the cross that is, we are saved by our confidence in looking to the cross of Jesus Christ, looking back to what Jesus accomplished for us there, and we look to the cross by faith. Those who were before the cross, we might say pre-cross, they looked forward to the promise of God that he would bring a Messiah, that he would bring a Redeemer, and that God would be true to his word. Both 
those who went before the cross and those who come after the cross, we are saved by our confidence in the true, finished, adequate, fully adequate work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, interestingly, in the Old Testament, we have individuals who John, as he writes his gospel and records the life of Jesus, for instance, John chapter 8 and verse 56, John recording the words of Jesus, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Abraham, hundreds of years, 2,000 years before the coming of Jesus, he saw Christ's day and was glad. We also have in John chapter 12 and verse 41, these things Isaiah said because he saw his glory. And there is various portions, Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 53 and elsewhere, where we can pinpoint very definitely Isaiah prophesying specifically about Jesus coming. John says, these things Isaiah said because he saw his glory and he spoke of him. The only way of salvation is not through works. It is by the grace of God and that is obtained by faith. Question number two, to whom do we pray in the Trinity. To whom do we pray in the Trinity? The Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit? Think of this in this manner. As you pray, you are praying to one God who is in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so each of these are a part of the prayers that we offer. And consider this. We pray to the Father through the access we have in the Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit. All three of them engaged, all three of them a part of receiving our prayers and, and uh, empowering our prayers, receiving, empowering, being a participant in the prayers. We pray to the Father through the access we have in the Son, in the power of the Holy Spirit. And so let's take three portions of Scripture. First of all, John chapter 16 and verse 23, Jesus said, In that day you will not question me about anything. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. Also, chapter 14 and verse 14, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. And Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18, Paul exhorts us, saying, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, in the power of the Spirit. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it is not simply to one to the Father through the glorious access that we have in Jesus Christ. Jesus was the one who opened heaven's door for us to come and to make our petitions. And the Holy Spirit is delighted to come and to empower, and especially when we don't know what we ought to pray, the Spirit comes and helps us in our weakness. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. We will use it as quickly as we are able. Our mailing address, Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. First of all, Lois, Jan, and Rick sing, I have found a hiding place. Then Heidi, Ruth, and Matt sing, Like a River Glorious.
ages, let me hide in thee. Jesus, rose of Sharon, sweet thou art to me. Lily of the valley, bright and morning star, fairest of ten thousand to my soul.
Till the storm passes by, it's our brand new CD of 13 songs. Our musicians have teamed up once again and have done an excellent job of singing songs which you know and love, as well as new songs that you will enjoy getting acquainted with. Heidi and Dorothy sing Till the Storm Passes By. Tim Sturby sings Jesus Is All the World to Me. Matt and Rick and Ruth sing Hiding in Thee. These and 10 more songs of blessing for your heart. Ask for your copy. It is sent free and postage paid simply upon your request. Our mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C 2H6. You may also contact us toll free 1 833 367 3852 or use our website Faith to live by.ca in order to pro place your request. And now we have Heidi, Rick, and Terry to sing, Where Could I Go? Sore. Where could I go but to the Lord? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to help me in the end. Where could I go but to the I'm confident that I'm speaking today to some men and women who have spent a good part of your life or all of your life in the business of sales. You have sold various products, you have made promotions, you have made sales pitches repeatedly, and you know the importance of not simply presenting the information and then leaving it at that. But there comes that point in your presentation where you say, now, what are you going to do about this? Are you going to take this wonderful offer that I am presenting to you, this opportunity which will not always be here, or will you turn away? Will you seek something else? Preachers do the very same thing. When we proclaim God's truth 
and when we declare what God has to say about our lives, that we are dead in our trespasses and sins, but that Jesus Christ has come from heaven's glories in order to live among us, to die upon Calvary's cross, in order that there might be forgiveness for our sins. And preachers, as we share this message of God's attitude and God's view on this world, that we are undone in and of ourselves, but that God has stepped in in order to make the offer of forgiveness available to us, an offer which will not always be there and obtainable, what will we do? It is typically called the altar call, and we have been considering from various portions of the scriptures how that the sacred writers also make altar calls at various points in the sacred script. Today I want to take you very quickly to 1 Kings and chapter 18. It's the life of the mighty fiery prophet Elijah. Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 21, he issues a declaration, he issues a challenge, he issues a call for the people to make up their minds as to what they were going to do. You see, the people had been not following after the Lord. Elijah went so far as to say, Lord, I'm it. I am the only one who is left. All of the people, they have gone astray. I am the one and the only. Now, he was not accurate in that. His complaint was addressed by the Lord to say, Elijah, you are not the only one. I have yet kept for myself, the Lord speaks. But it was indeed a desperate situation where there was a wholesale giving over to chase after Baal and to worship Baal under the encouragement of King Ahab and the wicked queen Jezebel as well. Elijah, after three years of famine, which had come about because of a horrible drought, Elijah says to the people, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? There's a word for our world today. How many opinion polls have you been asked to give comment on? How many times, either online or through a phone call or something, someone is seeking to elicit your opinion? Opinions are a dime a dozen. They are cheap as anything could ever be opinions, and they're nothing new. Here we are about 3,000 years ago, and we find ourselves asking this, being asked this very question, how long will you, you, how long will you hesitate between two opinions? The people were pulled this way, and then they were pulled the other way, and back and forth they were going, and they wanted to honor God. They wanted to have what he had to give to them, but they also wanted to take out of Baal's hand. They wanted to check in at both stores in order to be receiving of blessing. Elijah says, look, this is an impossible situation. No man can serve two masters. Either you will hold to the one and hate the other, or you're hold to the other and turn away from the other. You can't serve both God and the devil. You can't serve the one true God as well as this Baal fellow. Choose whom you will serve. How long will you hesitate between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. But the people did not answer him a word. They didn't give any indication. Here they were hesitating back and forth, not sure what they should do. Am I speaking to someone, and you're in that very same category. You're, you may not just be now in that category. Maybe your whole life has been in that very same way. 
Elijah, he thundered the word of God. He spoke plainly. He spoke clearly. He spoke with fire. And he spoke that God is true. There was a contest there on Mount Carmel. And against all of the forces, the hundreds who stood for Baal and for the forces of wickedness, Elijah stood alone there on that day. And Elijah was the one who was demonstrated to be serving the one true God. This one true God has sent Jesus Christ in order that we might know redemption, that we might know forgiveness. I, in like manner, as Elijah, speak to you and to say, why do you try to curry favor with the world? Why do you try to saddle up to the world? Why do you try to go as far as you can in the world's way? And then every once in a while come back and say, Lord, I'd really like to have your blessing. I'd really like to have your approval. I'd really like to have what you have to give me as well. I bid you to no longer be of two opinions pulled here and there, but to set your heart upon the one true God and to honor and to serve him, to live for him. Jesus Christ came that you might know his life and his forgiveness, and I bid you to come to him and to him alone today. There's room at the cross for you. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 